Stephen A., break this down for us. Is it that the Warriors are that good or the competition is just that bad? Well, I think that, hey, listen, I'm not trying to say the Warriors weren't that good. All I'm trying to say is that what resonates with me most is the bad competition. Uh, the Portland Trailblazers simply were not on their level. The Utah Jazz simply were not on their level. And obviously, due to the bevy of injuries with the San Antonio Spurs, they clearly weren't on a level because you don't have Tony Parker, you don't have Kawhi Leonard. Uh, you're just not going to be able to compete with the Golden State Warriors. As we saw, I go to the first round. I remember in the first half when Damian Lillard and uh, uh, C.J. McCollum went ballistic in the first half. Ultimately, they were neutralized in the second half, but you had absolutely no help whatsoever outside of those two guys, and as a result, Portland was overwhelmed. I remember game four of that closeout series. Obviously, the Golden State Warriors swept them. I mean, the Golden State went out to a 45-22 to 22 lead in the first quarter. I remember watching that game, and it was like 28-7 to 7 within the first few minutes or whatever. It was over before Portland even blinked. The absence of personnel just was too much. Utah, same situation. Yeah, relatively decent team, but Gordon Haywood and an older Joe Johnson, who's pretty much very, very good in the clutch, but outside of that, over a course of 48 minutes, he's not the kind of guy that could carry you, and that left it all to Gordon Haywood. You simply didn't have the muscle. You didn't have enough, and then obviously this series, and so even though, again, we understand the greatness of the Golden State Warriors, we know how uh, fantastic they are, the flip side to it, what resonated with me was the absence of competition. These guys uh, were just not in their league, and it's difficult for me to tell anything about the Golden State Warriors right now because they have yet to face adversity as far as I'm concerned, and that's why I go with bad competition instead of good Warriors. Well, I understand why you would say that, particularly with Kawhi's injury, because the first time they ran up against another really, really good team, uh, when they had their full squad available to them, and by the way, their full complement of players did not include a fully healthy Kawhi. Kawhi was already suffering in that game as that game wore on. He'd already re-injured himself even before ultimately, you know, the injury that, that, that led to his uh, leaving the game. So I get that. They were down 23 points against that team with Kawhi. And so you can say as soon as you took Kawhi off, that was their only competition. And otherwise, they've had a clear path. But Utah's a good team, Stephen A. They're a 50-plus win team. They were the best defensive team by some metrics in the NBA this year. They got swept. Portland has a hell of a backcourt. They got swept. I mean, Utah and Portland, especially Utah, is not the kind of team that gets swept out of the playoffs, but they got swept by this Golden State team. And even though with Kawhi, you and I both believe they would have lost that game, obviously, and maybe not another game. game not the game. Oh, you talking State about Golden State losing yeah, that game? Golden State okay, gotcha, gotcha, let's, okay. let's give, let's gotcha. give the Spurs another game, too. I think we're more or less on the same page. It's a six-game series, right, for Golden State, yeah. something like that. And, yeah, we and, so, and so the fact that they're 12-0, and 0, that comes with an asterisk. I get that. But really what we're seeing here is this is how good Golden State is. You know, this is an arms race. When LeBron James got squad up, when he left Cleveland the first time and created a super team in Miami... That was, that was really the beginning of this stuff. And then, as that team around him aged and declined, he went to a new super team in Cleveland and got them to trade for Kevin Love. And, and Kyrie Irving is entering what should be his prime. And so they were able to beat that super team in Golden State, which was, at the time, that team was created in a more kind of, I guess you'd say, organic way that people prefer. It wasn't players deciding to play together. It was the GM doing it. For, so for some reason, that doesn't rub people the wrong way. But at any rate, LeBron James on the super team was too good even for them. And so the arms race continued. They went out and got Kevin Durant. It's like the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War or the AL East in the early 2000s in terms of their payroll. It's an arms race. And they just added the best available weapon in Kevin Durant. And there is no such thing as any team that's ever been constructed, including the Dream Team. No basketball team ever wouldn't get better by adding Kevin Durant. If you add Kevin Durant to any team of all time, that team just got better. You mean to tell me there's no spot on the roster starting around the bench that Kevin Durant wouldn't improve? Of course, there's at least a roster spot that he improves. So the Golden State Warriors just got better. And they are so good right now that even the Spurs, even at full strength, would not have stopped them. So is this a bad West or, or a good Golden State? 
Well, it's a compromised West because Kawhi was hurt, but this is a great Golden State team. And what you would expect once they added a top five, maybe top three player in the world in Kevin Durant. And it's the Cold War. Yeah, yeah, but, but again, you're deviating from the question because for me, when you say the Warriors are this good, I get that. Nobody's disputing their talent and their greatness. But we're talking about these particular playoffs based on what we've seen. And we have to take into account what the competition is. From a macro perspective, if you just ignored these playoffs and just looked at Golden State over Overall, from the last few years, from Mark Jackson to Steve Kerr to Luke Walton, back to Kerr. Mike Brown is in the mix now because Kerr is not there. You see a system in place. If you want to talk about good Warriors, you're talking from a macro perspective, and then you allude to what Joe Lacob, the owner, the majority owner for the franchise, called the gold standard. Essentially, I'm paraphrasing. I don't know if those were his specific words, more so than a year, more than a year ago. But it was something along those lines that they're the gold standard. They're the elite, they're the creme de la creme, they're what everybody else is aiming for. It makes perfect sense because you're a well-dolled machine even without Kevin Durant. You have a system in place, something has happened where the level of unselfishness has ingratiated itself into that franchise. I believe it started with Mark Jackson in transition and was elevated by Steve Kerr. Luke Walton took it by the horn where Steve Kerr had to be out last year. Steve Kerr comes back, Mike Brown is there, and all of a sudden he's looking like he's a big-time coach because of the system, the personnel, the unselfishness, and everything in place. What I'm saying, however, is that before these playoffs begin, you could say all of that. But unfortunately, we've learned nothing new yeah. about the Golden State Warriors. There is nothing that we've seen from the Golden State Warriors through these playoffs that we didn't know coming into That's it. Right. We knew how but, lethal they were. But, we knew how selfless they were. But things have been what reinforced. 